The Purdue University Schools of Engineering had the foresight in 1946 to add air breathing and rocket propulsion to the curriculum. In the search for a person to teach in this area, they found Dr. Maurice Zucro, who was at the time engineering technical assistant to Executive Vice President William Zisch at Aerojet Engineering Company. Aerojet was one of the pioneering companies in the field of rocket propulsion systems. Aerojet was organized in 1942 by Theodore von Karman, with such future luminaries as Martin Summerfield and Frank Molina on the staff. Dr. Zucro has the unique distinction of receiving the first PhD degree from Purdue University, awarded in 1928. His defense was held in Eliza Fowler Hall in the presence of the entire faculty of the university. Following his graduation, Dr. Zucro held a number of positions in industry. He was vice president of engineering for the Paragon Vaporizer Corporation, director of research for the Republic Flowmeter Company, and vice president and general manager of the Ring Balance Instrument Company before joining Aerojet Engineering Corporation in 1942. Dr. Zucro had a dual appointment in the schools of mechanical engineering and aeronautical engineering when he joined the university faculty as a professor in 1946. One of Professor Zucro's first efforts was to publish a text treating both air breathing and rocket propulsion. The first edition was published in 1948. This book became the propulsion bible nationwide for many of the early years of the budding jet propulsion industry. Doc, as he was affectionately known by his students, saw the need to establish an advanced degree program. Experimental research facilities were needed to meet that objective. The first experiments were set up in the East Hangar and an adjacent Quonset Hut building at the Purdue University Airport. Experimental programs were started in heat transfer and combustion processes for gas turbine engines and in film cooling heat transfer for rocket motor applications. Air for the experiments involving gas turbine engines was supplied by six Allison V1710 engine superchargers housed in the adjoining building. A roots blower used for the film cooling experiments was housed in the east hangar. In 1948, graduate students Ernie Petrick and Bill Kraft with technicians Gordon Hurst and Dallas West, set up and started operation of the Quonset Hut Lab. Their objective was to conduct experiments to measure heat transfer in air-cooled radial inflow turbines. The work was brought to an early conclusion when a fire destroyed the facility in 1953. Experimental research in rocket propulsion was initiated following the construction of the rocket lab, now called the Propulsion Lab, on a plot of land located at the northwest corner of the Purdue University Airport in 1948. By this time, Doc Zucro had become a full-time member of the mechanical engineering faculty and had obtained the university's support necessary to share the cost of constructing a rocket test facility between the Office of Naval Research and Purdue University. During the construction phase of the laboratory, representatives of the Office of Naval Research made several routine inspections to confirm progress on the facility. This facility, with future additions, became known as the Purdue University Jet Propulsion Center. Graduate students Walter Hess, George Palmer, and Cecil Warner contributed much effort toward the design and construction of this first experimental facility on the present site of the center. Initially, communication between the rocket test facility and the secretaries and the offices in the east hangar at the airport was by means of a hand-cranked World War II sound-powered field telephone. The wires were strung on fences to span the one-mile distance between the two locations. On rainy days, the chances of making connections were slim indeed. The propellant combination of interest in the 1948 to 1950 period was white fuming nitric acid 
and JP3, a jet fuel much like kerosene. So the laboratory was outfitted with tanks and delivery systems to supply these propellants to the rocket motors at pressures up to 3,000 PSI. Doc Zucro felt that an appreciable gain in rocket performance could be realized by increasing the chamber pressure from the then popular 300 PSI to much higher pressures in the 2,000 PSI range. The facility was therefore designed by Walter Hess to permit conducting experimental firings at high chamber pressure conditions. A theoretical study by Charles Trent confirmed Doc's supposition that a 20% gain in performance could be realized with operation at the higher chamber pressures. A subsequent study by Professor Cecil Warner indicated that conventional regenerative fluid cooling of the thrust chamber would not be adequate at high chamber pressures, and an experimental program to examine the possibility of using liquid film cooling was initiated by graduate student Eldon Knuth, known as Al, and later continued by Donald Emmons and John Sellers, known as Jack. Thus, two fundamental research programs were initiated. One, the operation of rocket motors at high chamber pressure, and two, the development of enhanced cooling means for rocket motors operating at high chamber pressures. Both programs were funded by the Office of Naval Research under Project SQUID. These programs were technological groundbreakers for the 1947 through 1955 period. Much of the design data gathered on the heat transfer study was used by the aerospace industry almost immediately. The early high chamber pressure work done at the Jet Propulsion Center foreshadowed the space shuttle main engine, which operates at a chamber pressure of 3,260 PSI. An interesting aside regarding the center's work on operating rocket engines at very high chamber pressure came when a prominent NASA official was critical of the program stating that high chamber pressure operation was not needed in space. Ironically, this same man later became the coordinator of the Space Shuttle Main Engine Program. The early high chamber pressure rocket engine work was initiated by Hess and Palmer in 1949 and was continued by Claire Bailey, Del Robeson, and Al Graham until 1955 at which point rocket motor firings were made at 2,250 PSI chamber pressure. The experiments supported the expected performance increase predicted by Zucro and Trent. They also verified Sellers and Professor Warner's prediction that film cooling could be used effectively at high chamber pressures. The university administration showed considerable interest in the propulsion research in progress at the Jet Propulsion Center, as evidenced by a visit by Dean of Engineering George Hawkins and President Frederick Hovde. Progress along the road to success on the experimental program was not without some setbacks. An explosion resulted from an ignition delay thought to be caused by the low temperature of the hypergolic fuel used to start the rocket motor combustion process. The explosion provided additional motivation to pursue the ignition delay study undertaken by graduate student Stanley Gunn. His work set another early standard for industry on the measurement of ignition delay. His open cup work and finally the development of the impingement of injected streams of propellants became the universal method used to determine ignition delay with self-igniting propellants. An additional problem appeared during the conduct of the early high chamber pressure program as screaming high-frequency sounds were emitted periodically. An experimental research program to investigate combustion instability was initiated in 1957 by Doc Zucro with graduate student Robert Osborne as the investigator, looking at gas-gas and gas-liquid propellant combinations. The work continued into the 1970s with many programs initiated with industry and the university. Fundamental work at the Purdue University Jet Propulsion Center continued by Bunnell, Shiway, Pinchak, Netzer, and others under the direction of Professor Osborne. Later work of Thomas Carpenter and Thomas Larson extended to chamber pressures as high as 4,130 PSI. 
This work was done using nitrogen tetroxide and aerosene 50 liquid propellants in a newly constructed high-pressure rocket test facility built on a site east of the Jet Propulsion Center complex. In 1964, a facilities grant was awarded to Dr. Zucro and his staff for the construction of a high-pressure research laboratory. Funding for the high-pressure facility, totaling approximately $1.2 million, was furnished by grants from NASA and the National Science Foundation. Professor Charles Ayersman was recruited from Aerojet General's von Karman Center to direct the design and construction of the new laboratory. Ground was broken for the new facility on May 14, 1965. Raymond Bisplinghoff and Donald Holmes of NASA, U.S. Representative Charles Halleck, President Frederick Hovde, Division of Sponsored Programs Director Joseph Whaling, and Laboratory Director Maurice Doc Zucro of the Jet Propulsion Center attended. Many faculty of the School of Mechanical Engineering and their wives were also present. The facility was designed to permit rocket engine operation up to 5,000 psi chamber pressure and thrusts up to 20,000 pounds using nitrogen tetroxide and aerosene 50 as the propellant combination. Although the system could accommodate other storable propellants such as chlorine trifluoride and neat hydrazine fuel. The facility was also equipped with the capability to conduct research related to air breathing propulsion because a high pressure air storage capacity was provided to permit a blowdown system to be used. The air storage tanks were obtained with the help of the NASA sponsor from Atlas missile soft sites being abandoned by the Air Force near Cheyenne, Wyoming. Construction on the high pressure facility was completed in 1966. The first firing was a solid propellant grain in support of a program under the direction of Professor Osborne with graduate student Richard Burick, which was to determine the erosive burning characteristics of solid propellants. The first liquid rocket firing was made four months later with representatives of NASA on hand to certify the successful completion of the NASA facility grant. Experimental test firings were made in support of a NASA program investigating rocket engine performance and combustion stability at chamber pressures up to 5,000 psi. This work was done in support of the PhD studies of Tom Carpenter and Tom Larson. Liquid rocket testing at the center was concluded in 1977 with a NASA-sponsored program to evaluate the effect of thermal cycling on the copper, silver, and zirconia alloy to be used in the construction of the space shuttle main engine thrust chamber. This work was conducted as a PhD study by Warren Breckeisen. Solid propellant rocket work continued with strand burning rate experiments under the direction of Professor Osborne as well as an experimental program to examine the effect of spin stabilization on solid rocket engine port and nozzle flows under the direction of Professor Joe Hoffman with graduate students David Norton and Bannister Farquhar. Although much of this presentation has addressed the center's research efforts on rocket propulsion, it is important to stress the work running through this same time period on air-breathing jet engines. Doc Zucro's first book, published in 1948, broke ground as the first published classroom text treating the subject of air-breathing jet propulsion. The book included a set of charts providing the students with a means for correcting air tables for the effect of variable specific heat. These charts and tables were prepared by Dr. Zucro, Dr. Warner, and graduate student N. Robert Bolling. The results were also published in Purdue University Engineering Experiment Station Bulletin Number 127 under the title Constant Pressure Combustion Charts for Gas Turbines and Turbojet Engines. This unique contribution saw nationwide use during the early period of jet engine development. Dr. Zucro retired from Purdue University in 1966 to live in Santa Barbara, California leaving behind a rich heritage which included some 27 Ph.D. and 60 M.S. graduate students who achieved respected positions in the aerospace propulsion community, reflecting their thorough preparation 
and their ultimate contributions to the field of jet propulsion. Dr. Zucro died in 1975, ending the early era of the Jet Propulsion Center of Purdue University, but heralding the beginning of a new era of continued excellence. The post-Zucro era is so extensive, it will be the subject of an additional presentation. Dr. Bruce A. Reese was appointed the director of the Jet Propulsion Center when Dr. Zucro retired in 1966 and remained director until 1973, at which time he was appointed to the position of head of the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Dr. Douglas Abbott succeeded Dr. Reese as director from 1973 to 1977. Professor Charles M. Ehrsman served as operations manager from 1977 to 1981. Dr. Sanford Fleeter was director from 1981 to 1989, at which time Dr. Joe D. Hoffman assumed the position of director and still serves in that capacity. The only major facility addition made after Doc Zucro's retirement was the addition of a new air compressor facility in April 1976. The new system had an increased capacity over the aging original installation composed of World War II surplus torpedo compressors. The compressors for the new facility with a value of $750,000 were given by the Ingersoll Rand Corporation to Purdue University. The building and electrical substation and installation were funded by the university at a cost of $400,000. The new facility permitted pumping the center's 3,013 cubic foot storage capacity to 2,200 PSI in four hours, as opposed to the old system's 12 hours. This increased capacity permitted expansion of research into the area of combustion processes related to aircraft gas turbine engines, open flame burners, turbine blade cooling techniques, and duct flow field analysis. Investigations into compressor noise, blade flutter, and flow field characterization, and a number of programs utilizing computational fluid mechanics were also undertaken. The center was renamed the Thermal Sciences and Propulsion Center in 1972 to reflect its broadened research focus. The center still maintains the tradition of excellence in research and education begun by Dr. Maurice J. Zucro in 1948.